introduce our next speaker, which is Brittany. Uh, uh, Brittany works at uh, EOS Eco Energy. It's a charitable environmental organization that's based in Sackville uh, and it serves the Tantrum, uh, Merriman and Cook region and beyond. Um, EOS Eco Energy dedicate community based solutions to climate adaptations and local watershed issues. Brittany is their executive director um, and she's going to be talking to us now about the Shignecto Watersheds Monitoring Program as well as their integrated watersheds monitoring plan. Um, that will be steering their monitoring efforts moving forward and the work building locally capa local capacity on community-based watershed monitoring. And I think it's going to be exploring as well these challenges about capacity and how we have to adapt and manage the plans that we have with the resources that we have. Um, so I'm going to hand over to you now, Brittany. Look forward to uh, your presentation. Thank you. And thank you for the introduction, David. And thanks for having me. Um, I'm a long-term fan of AWN, and I credit my data analysis capabilities specific to Laura's teachings. Uh, shortly after I started with the environmental nonprofit sector about six years ago. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, my name is Brittany, and I am new to my executive director role uh, here at EOS EcoEnergy, but uh, not new to watershed monitoring. And so I just have a little bit of an introduction to go over with you. I'll try to keep things brief and I'll discuss a little bit more about what we are currently up to. And if you're not familiar with us in general, um, EOS EcoEnergy is coming up on its 20th anniversary. You can find us uh, nestled between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, the Chignecto region, um, and municipalities and communities that we service and work together with are the Strait Shores, or formerly Port Elgin, up towards uh, PEI, the Tanchamar, uh, Sackville, Dorchester communities, um, and out towards the village of Memram Cook. And so we began uh, as a group of community members who were interested in creating a, a wind farm um, and have focused on renewable energy, um, still dedicated on climate change mitigation. We've since branched out and uh, completed the climate change adaptation plans with local municipalities. Um, after the amalgamation of the local governance reform, these will have to be updated. Um, but part of also expanding to climate change adaptation is working with research, uh, with recent data. And so uh, following what our communities need and want to see, um, we have done uh, watershed monitoring locally since 2019. And so um, we are currently completing, almost finished, our integrated watershed management plan uh, to steer our um, efforts forward. And uh, I will discuss and show you a little bit more about that. We're very focused on education and outreach. So um, we work with our community, young and old, um, with a lot of schools and uh, programming uh, across our region. Um, we are very fortunate to have a lot of strong partnerships and we keep getting asked to talk, which is good, um, as well as it is just a joy. I'm really looking forward to this summer to getting out and getting more uh, youth and community members involved directly in water quality monitoring. Um, and we are proudly managing our Atlantic data stream data sets, which we are um, very dedicated to continuing so that everyone will have access to our data as we collect it. And so what we're working with now, since 2019, we've had uh, monitored 40 water quality monitoring sites. And this was on a rotational basis until this year. So we have three different watersheds that we have been focusing on. Um, we have, we're not capable of completing uh, the annual monitoring of 40 water quality sites. We are a, quite a small organization, though mighty. And we have a great and dedicated volunteer basis, but also 
you know, um, it is very expensive to monitor 40 sites altogether. So we've been working with our watershed um, committee, our Shignetto Watersheds Committee, which is full of members of Mount Allison University professors, the Amlam Cook uh, First Nation and Fort Folly uh, Habitat Recovery Group, um, local uh, community leaders who, together with our staff, we've decided to dedicate our efforts to 12 annual monitoring sites that are currently being determined. And this is us. So these are our three watersheds. These are our three different data sets that we have been doing on rotation. Uh, last year's monitoring efforts was in the blue area. Um, we went uh, to different sites along the Bay of Fundy, um, along uh, Emblem Cook uh, River, along uh, some really gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous areas. Um, but uh, we're looking at now choosing within all of these 12 uh, sites. And so we also work with uh, an incredible expert, a local expert, microbiologist, uh, community leader, Miranda Corkum, who has completed this Excel, uh, which I ev everybody loves a good Excel. And I also really love when they're color coded and they're really easy to uh, deal with after that. So it's, it's, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of prioritizing. And so having it all together and having our different uh, areas, areas of prioritization has been really just phenomenal uh, to have all in one document. So we have been looking at accessibility. As I mentioned, we're focusing on Bay of Fundy sites. Some of these are very silty. And so we're looking at the safety of our field workers and also the accessibility. A lot of these sites that we've been working with are also extremely rural. So much so that the dirt roads in spring and fall are not safe. <laughs> so being able to prioritize our safety uh, as well as uh, the safety of our volunteers is of absolute priority. But we also have uh, quite a few years of data uh, collected now, so we can see and map out where the impacts that we've seen that we would like to continue in monitoring, uh, whether that's dissolved oxygen, whether that's bacteria, um, we have a done community consultation to see where uh, recreational sites are of great importance to our community. Um, we're looking at branching out into a swim guide as well to be able to put our data in multiple places that would be available for our community members. Um, as well, why we were going through these different sites, uh, it was also great to have community consultation with the Indigenous community that was also able to tell us which sites were of a greater significance to them um, while we are choosing moving forward. So small but mighty, our staff capacity has been incredible, though we don't have many staff. Our staff are high quality. Um, we have a lot of Mount Allison University students who choose to stay, and that has been incredible, uh, myself included. Um, we also have a lot of partners, a lot of community members who keep coming back asking how they can help. Um, we train citizen scientists to come out with us. We have a citizen scientist dog, Maisie, which you can see here, who is mine, um, who had to go through a little bit of quality control training to know that she can't go upstream while we were sampling. She has to go downstream. Um, so there's a bit of a learning curve, but we all work together to get everything that we need done. So we are very fortunate and we are hoping to have a watershed coordinator um, full time as of this spring to uh, continue our efforts. We've had a few over the years, um, but we haven't had a full time watershed coordinator for, I think, a couple of years now. Um, so looking forward to really having all of our puzzle pieces in place. Our integrated watershed management plan is in the last steps of being completed, if you're not familiar with uh, what these are. Um, we have great examples to look at. Um, the our local organization, the Petticodiac Watershed Alliance, had completed one in 2012. Uh, Shidiac Bay Watershed Association completed one with the provincial government, which has been two documents that are uh, have been really crucial for us uh, moving forward. Ours is not as comprehensive as that one, um, but we have really uh, been focusing on 
completing this with all the considerations that we need. Um, so we've done community consultation. We've worked with our watershed, um, Chicnecta Watershed Committee. Um, we have access to a lot of climate change data and we are at in a region that is highly susceptible to climate change impacts. Um, flood mitigation, the Chicnecto Isthmus is just in a great area for storms, for storm surges and uh, flooding. So looking at a lot of different sites uh, that have salt marshes, that are more of a low lying, that have different uh, impacts for uh, deteriorating culverts. Um, so all that, we have access to uh, biodiversity surveys, um, which has been great for us to locate where our local species at risk are in accordance to our water quality sites. And of course, we have our water quality, uh, water quality data to look at. We're one, also considering- One, one more minute. Yep, thank you. We're also considering the land use. We have a lot of agricultural uh, work that is being done in this area, as well as um, mixed use areas, um, industrial, and uh, we are very fortunate to have some great areas of conservation, like the Tintamara National uh, Park. Um, we are also in a watershed without borders, so being between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, looking at how we can expand monitoring, but uh, with different pools of funding, since we are usually focused on the New Brunswick side. Um, here is a few of our species at risk that have been located near our water quality monitoring sites. Um, we have surveyed a few of them ourselves. So the future is looking bright, <laughs> but we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> But we're very looking, very much looking forward to uh, releasing our plan and our new annual uh, water quality monitoring regime. So this is my contact information. Feel free to have a chat with me anytime. I'm very passionate about this work and what we do. Uh, and of course, I would like to thank the New Brunswick uh, Environmental Trust Fund for our funding for this program. So thank you, and thank you for keeping me in line. I can ramble because I'm very, very excited about all this. So That's great. No, it's great to hear. Uh, we've probably got time for one question, if there's a question from anyone out there. That's... Raise your hand. I have one if there's none, but I'll wait. Go ahead. Okay, Go I'll ahead, go. Laura. Um, that was awesome. I really, I'm really intrigued about your work. Um, picking 12 sites out of 40. Um, I think like people always think improving their water quality monitoring plans means picking more sites and doing more, but that's not always the case. Um, it's really being strategic about the sites you pick. Um, I was just wondering if you'd be willing to share any of that, like the the template for doing some of that work. I would love to um, help out other folks doing same practices. For sure. I mean, while we work, we try not to recreate the wheel. So any way that we can help um, is something that I would, of course, be interested in. The Excel document is pretty fun. Um, I was really happy with how it, would, it was put together. Um, so if that can be of help to anybody else, absolutely. We're also training uh, our partner organizations to take on some of those sites so we don't have to sacrifice them altogether, yes. which is also something that we're really, really looking forward to this spring. Awesome. That's, Thank you, Brittany. Great work. That's great. Thanks, Brittany. And and yeah, that's a really great lesson for us around uh, being uh, really smart and, and specific about where we really need to put our limited resources is an important part about uh, being a resilient organization. So that's great.